Hello and welcome to an NTN special, interview special. My name is Jesse Leons and I have in studio with me a special guest, a Minister of Government, Senator the Honorable Fortuna Belrose. She is the Minister with Responsibility for Culture and the Creative Industries. A special good morning to you, Senator. Thank you very much, um, Jesse. Good morning. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we seem to be, I, well, I want to start with Carnival. Uh, because we are on, you know, the brink of what would have been uh, the 20th and 21st Carnival Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, many persons on those days and even the weekend. And e since it was announced that it would be postponed to 2021, uh, persons have been reflecting on Carnival and expressing, you know, their disappointment. But uh, through no fault of the government, we've had COVID-19, the onset of it, uh, putting off a lot of activities, including Carnival itself, this uh, uh, cultural showpiece. Uh, can you speak to what the plans are of the government? Uh, we've had, we've heard word of your support for Carnival going forward. Uh, speak to your plans for uh, the uh, cultural uh, showpiece in 2021. I can imagine a lot of persons will be looking forward to it coming bigger and better next year yeah I think um, thank you very much for that um, Jesse um, first of all I really want to thank the carnival fraternity because um, when the decision was made um, to defer to next year I think they were integral you understand to making that decision um, and in fact they really drove us you know to making the decision earlier because we were at a point where um, we had agreed that we would have gone by the 30th of April um, to make a decision on the carnival and the carnival fraternity felt, you know, come on, let's, let's make a decision hard and fast mm -hmm. early. Some of us were ready, some of us were not quite ready. But in the advent of COVID and mm -hmm. with all what was happening globally, it was just impossible for us to do it. So let us not delay it, but let's take the decision now to do it for next year. So having done that and agreed and worked with them, I think um, it were, the, the onus now is on them as well as us um, to ensure that next year we deliver bigger and better. Mm -hmm. Um, from a government standpoint, I could tell you um, what we have done now is we have reorganized our events in Lucia organization um, that would be working in, in the forefront um, with these organizations to deliver St. Lucia's Carnival. Um, we have established a new board um, to ensure that the, the, the focus um, with respect to the delivery of our cultural events and festivals um, is well, well executed um, next year. Um, the government, of course, committed itself again to giving the three point something million dollars to Carnival. So that is there in terms of the investment. But I think importantly, what we've seen over the last three years is the level of investment being made by the private persons mm -hmm. and the bands in particular, because the mm -hmm. Carnival Bands Association um, is another critical agency in the delivery of the Carnival product mm -hmm. um, for St. Lucia. So there's been great enthusiasm, great mm -hmm. effort. Um, by all of these parties and we continue to feel and, you know, and sense the synergy you know, as we move into the planning mode um, for Carnival next year. Uh, and not only Carnival, but all our events. Mm -hmm. I think we've been able to establish a certain standard in, in terms of operating. And so all of the key players you know, understand where we are headed. And so the support is very much there with respect to every aspect of our programming um, for, the, for uh, um, the delivery of our national events. So we're quite comfortable in terms of where we are. Mm -hmm. um, we are satisfied that the organizations, the private bands and the, and, the, and the private agencies that are working are in tune with us. Um, there's a lot of dialogue that will be happening over the next few months to shape the schedule for next year um, for Carnival. Um, but I think we are on a good footing um, with respect to the recognition you know, of the importance of Carnival itself, you know, to our economy as a country. And when my government um, four years ago established the events company, it was to send a message across the society and globally that we are, in, uh, we, we, we are committed to the development of the arts, um, but importantly, the arts too um, must contribute economically to our country. And so we've seen great effort insofar as ensuring that that happened simultaneously with the, delivery, the, the development of the carnival locally. So we're quite happy where we are and um, the agencies have understood that mandate and we are all working together to ensure that we deliver next year. So we want to say hats off to the key, key players. It's not government only. Government is just one, 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 one supporting arm. We create the policy environment, mm -hmm. you understand, but the investors, mm -hmm. the people, the communities are coming forward to take ownership to make it happen in the way that we want and we're quite happy with what we've seen okay we've made our peace with carnival and hoping for bigger better yes. next year uh, as it pertains to other uh, cultural activities for this year we know there uh, was a roster 
uh, of, of activities for mm -hmm. the year 2020. Yeah. Uh, do we hold our breath for additional events this year? I know certainly uh, considering COVID-19, uh, yeah. there are a lot of things that have to be considered going yeah. forward. Uh, can you speak to what are the plans of your yeah. ministry? Well, yeah, well, well, thanks for that. I think currently what we, the Events St. Lucia, Cultural Development Foundation, Folk Research Center, all the key players are currently involved in looking at some events that can possibly happen between now and the Creole Heritage Month, you okay. know, just to open up, you know, we have opened up the country, but we believe that it is necessary to have some small activities to engage some of our artists who are really crying out, you understand, and looking for opportunity to perform. You know, um, we recognize the value of that to our country. Um, and so the, the, the agencies are currently trying to put a schedule together okay. to be able to deliver some small events. Having said that, so it must be small events, it cannot be mass events because you would appreciate the, the protocols with respect to um, the Ministry of Health World Health Organization with respect to the COVID virus. Um, but we are looking to shape some small events nice. um, to ensure that our entire nation participates um, in it. So it, may, it will be part um, visual, virtual, um, and also there'll be a physical setting where people you know, can congregate, but I think we have a minimum of 200 persons no. um, in that setting. But Ma we'll maximum. Yeah, maximum yeah. 200 persons. So that will be unveiled um, in, 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 in the not too distant future. They're still trying to tidy it up so that it fits and fits into the criteria. You understand, uh, particularly with this season um, called COVID. Okay. In addition to events, uh, mm. there's a lot of work and strides that have been made from your mm. ministry, and, and uh, much of which you did speak on uh, from your contribution during the budget mm. debates. Uh, if you could just give us some insight into what we can expect coming from your ministry in terms of plans. I, I know that uh, the music lab is being uh, wrapped up at Gros yes. as also, uh, also in Castries uh, mm. Southeast. Mm -hmm. uh, but can you speak to additional work that is being uh, taken to help support mm -hmm. our entertainers, su support our uh, creative uh, content mm -hmm. creators here in St. Lucia? Yeah. Well, I think the, 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 f the fundamental thing that we'll be doing or the, the, the priority for us in the next year would be to conduct a review of the national policy okay. for culture. Um, as you know, the, the cultural policy was established in the early part of the new, this new millennium. Um, it's now almost 20 years old. Um, and of course, we believe that given the dynamics of the environment where we are now as a nation, um, the infusion of that digital economy, you know, there are so many areas for us. And even as a government, um, what we want to do with respect to our Cultural Development Foundation, which is one of the key agencies um, to drive the development of our culture, the kind of work that we want to do with these in this institution, um, we would need to have that broad consultation and dialogue with the public to ensure that everybody understands clearly what it is that we want to do. Um, we recognize that the, 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 the demand um, for the arts is growing. Mm -hmm. We are trying to build that creative economy and so we have to ensure that everything that we do tapers, you understand, into, into, that, in, into, that, into that position where we are headed as a nation. And so the consultations will begin at some point, mm -hmm. um, but currently we are working with some of the, 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 the de developing the terms of reference okay. so that we can review that policy in the way that we want to ensure that we have a policy um, that is relevant um, can stand the test of, and can stand the test of time okay. um, over the next few years. Let's but that's where we are with respect to working on that policy. Let's stick a pin in that. We're going to mm. come back to the policy. We're due for our first break uh, in this special mm. interview. Do stay tuned. When we come back, we speak more on the national cultural policy that is being uh, mm. prepared, drafted at this time, as indicated by uh, the Prime Minister, Honorable Alan Chastney. And we mm. will be getting into other aspects of uh, the Ministry of uh, Culture mm. and Creative Industries, as well as speaking on the income support that is being offered for uh, content mm -hmm. creators that have now been affected, displaced by the effects of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Overnight, growing national a unrest. Society, a digital cashless it's society. Not One world currency. A vaccine which has for COVID-19. Throughout the COVID patient virus. Macy's iconic flagship. Virus. 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 The coronavirus. 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 The the rest of the world <laughs> and the tiny
in this constantly changing environment, resulting in sensory overload, cut through the noise and tune in to the National Television Network, the official source of information, all facts. Thank you so much for staying tuned. This is an NTN special, an NTN interview special. And in this edition, we are speaking to uh, the uh, senator, the Honorable uh, Fortuna Bellrose. Mm -hmm. She is the minister with responsibility for culture and the creative industries. Uh, we were just coming off of before this, this break, uh, speaking on the national cultural policy uh, that is being drafted at this time. Again, if you could just go over uh, the plans uh, for this uh, cultural policy. You did mention <laughs> that, that there's consultation to be had, in uh, terms of reference being uh, uh, prepared. But uh, could you just give us some insight as to where this administration is headed with this policy? Uh, what it does it, it, it's looking to encapsulate within this policy, the priority areas for this sector? Mm -hmm. Well, well w w when, you, when, when you think of the policy, you're looking at the, the environment mm -hmm. in which you want to, you, you know, you exist, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, the policy framework in which you want your policy to develop. There are a number of issues that are currently plaguing our society. And, and we believe and we see it every day, you know, um, issues of the dependency syndrome, you know, where people expect in the society um, others to really be doing things for them as opposed to them doing for themselves. We need mm -hmm. to look deep within ourselves and see how best as a society we can assist in transforming that behavior from being so reliant on gouvernement for everything, you understand, to people understanding that they have a responsibility for themselves. And so they, uh, they need now to be able to, to learn to fish, in other words, you know, to be able to survive, you know, in these times. Um, that's, that's one of the critical things. The dependency syndrome is there. And, and over the years, we've had the policy, but what have we really done to be able to shape the mindsets to ensure that people, you understand, become independent citizens and being able to contribute freely, you know, to the society um, and not looking for those extrinsic rewards, but valuing the intrinsic rewards that they receive from being part of a community. You, you, you understand? Yeah. So, so there are lots of issues that we see as we've gone with 40 years independent, but there are a number of issues that affect our own mindset. Mm -hmm. And so we need to look to see where within that system that we are setting up, that we would be able to find that independence and freedom to be able to live as citizens who respect each other, you know, love each other, and of course understand that we all have a contribution to make, you know, and when people make their contribution and they're successful, that we don't envy them, but we look to emulate them and aspire to be like them, you know, and even perhaps be better than them. So we, ne we need to look deep and, and within the culture, there's so many things that we can do to assist us in arriving and deriving that, mm -hmm. you know. And I think to some extent we've probably lacked the systematic approach in arriving at that point. But I think it's time that we look at it and see how best we can use the institutions that exist within our culture to be able to assist us in, in realizing that. You know, so there's a lot of work to be done um, and we have to look at the synergizing, the connectivity, the, the relationships with, within all these institutions mm -hmm. that support our cultural programming to ensure that we deliver what we want for our country. And I can imagine, too, there's also to be considered the mm. way we've seen the emergence of technology playing yes. into the creative industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen uh, the evolution, or should I say the, the addition mm -hmm. of content creators. Absolutely. St. Lucia has YouTubers. St. Yes. Lucia has yes. um, um, more and more uh, studios. Yes. Uh, can you speak to how that will also play into the national policy? Oh, well, well, I think in, in a very big way. And, you know, and, and, and for us now, I, when I grew up, we didn't have what we had was just what was around us. But now young people have so many things at their fingertips. You know, the world has changed, you know, and so the opportunities even to shoot your own videos and do your own programming, you know, how does the society respond to that? How does the Ministry of Culture, how does the Cultural Development Foundation respond, you know, to the demands of young people who, you know, who are, who are very savvy, you know, and have the ability to be able to do certain things you know, within, within, this, within the social media realm. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have to respond to those things and we need an institution, we need organizations that are prepared to engage and move in that direction. Um, so I think for too long, we've just sat and watched what is happening. We need now to make the change. Um, and so we're looking for a system that will adapt and respond, you know, to the demands of this new era. 
you know, with respect to, with respect to our culture. Granted, of course, there are things that will always be authentically St. Lucian, mm -hmm. and that's what we want, mm -hmm. you know. But then as the environment changes, we have to be ready to embrace change, mm -hmm. but at the same time not losing that identity mm -hmm. um, of the St. Lucianness Weaving that we all, yes, we, um, we, we all long for. Okay. Um, uh, moving on, if you could just give us a, well, a, a deadline, if any, for this policy, because I know a lot of persons are looking forward to this cultural policy, uh, what it will have, what it will entail, and how soon it can benefit uh, creatives here on island. And any <laughs> deadlines? Yeah, well, well, the, well, the thing is, the pol there's a policy document that has been reviewed, um, and so that is a process. So you do your initial scoping. Um, on the your initial assessment of the document. Then, of course, you have to prepare the terms of reference with respect to what you want done. Um, um, so, th so that process is currently ongoing, okay. you know, because you've only just been mandated, you understand, to undertake that assignment. So we, we, we've done the preliminary, and of course, very soon we'll be going out um, into the public domain to find, you know, the consultant who will be taking, you know, taking on the work within, you know, within, within, that, um, within that framework. But of course, I can't put a timeline on that. I think um, if, if you're looking at a comprehensive review of your policy, that calls for quite a bit of engagement, working with people, connecting, mm -hmm. going through communities, um, engaging communities. And um, yeah, it will take some time, you know, to get it done. And for so all I'm the right sure, reasons. Yes, of course, of <laughs> course, for all the right reasons. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I can't really put a timeline, but one would hope within at least 16 months, you know, they're about, you know, that process can be, can be completed, okay. you know, but it will take some time to, to get it done and get it done correctly because you want everybody to have an input into what is happening. Absolutely. Uh, going on to the, uh, your contribution in the Honorable House in terms of the, the budget debates, uh, we did hear from you that there was a reduction in the allocation for your ministry yeah. as opposed to the previous year. Yeah. Uh, how, can you speak to how you'll be maximizing uh, the allocation this year in terms of meeting uh, the, as many needs of the ministry uh, in an effort to support uh, yeah. the individuals that you target at this time? Yeah. Well, well the, 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 yes, our, our <laughs> the, the contribution to the creative industries and culture was, of course, significantly reduced. Mm -hmm. um, and that's expected. It's COVID time. It's difficult. But having said that, though, I think there is a strong commitment from the government with respect to supporting the arts. And so whenever there's an opportunity um, or, or, or a worthy project that comes through, I think there would be systems to ensure that the support is given um, to the artists. I think um, you, you would appreciate, particularly my prime minister, mm -hmm. you know, is very, very fond of the arts. And he believes in the value of the arts towards the society. Um, and so one, one cannot ignore the fact that we have a number of creative persons who are out there, you know, particularly at this time, who are unemployed and not able to, not able to work. Um, and having said that, that's why we're so grateful for the income support program, mm -hmm. which is now rolling out um, for the artists, those persons who are artisans, crafters, vendors, you name it. Um, there are opportunities now for them to come in complete the necessary application form. The support system is there now for them mm -hmm. to be able to do that online if they don't have the means. They just come into the Ministry of Tourism and that service is provided for them. Mm -hmm. So th once they can provide all the documentation, of course, mm -hmm. um, they would get that support. But the, the support system is there for them. And you know, the, 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 the importance of the arts must never be understated, you know, underestimated. It is significant. It is what makes us you know, who we are. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was, it's what demonstrates to St. Lucians who we are. You know, um, it's what defines us when we go abroad as well, you know, um, and so it's, it's, it's an industry that you cannot ignore, you know, and so even if the, the, the amount is reduced, I think the value of the work, you understand, will Remains. always be there, it will remain, you know, um, and of course we just want to encourage those persons in that sector, you know, to, to continue to work, um, to do what they have to do, you know, to, to make our nation, you know, continue to be, you know, to be proud of them. Wonderful. Yeah. We are due for another break. When we come back, another mm -hmm. segment to talk with a Senator, uh, the Honorable Fortuna Bellrose, speaking on the uh, portfolio, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, creative industries, as well as culture. Stay tuned for that and more. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the same. 
solution. Use organic and Excessive agrochemical use, additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Thank you so much for staying tuned. We continue our interview uh -huh. special with uh, Senator the Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, Minister with Responsibility for Culture and the Creative Industries. I want to touch on the uh, Goodwill Ambassadors at this time. If you could speak to uh, this this work that is ongoing mm -hmm. and, and I think uh, commendable on the part of your ministry mm -hmm. uh, for this, this um, initiative. Uh, speak to it. What is happening and how is it benefiting uh, the image of St. Lucia at this yeah. time? Yeah. Well, well, as you know, St. Lucia has, uh, we, we've got lots of talented people and I think that's something that we've spoken about for years now. Lots of persons who are productive citizens, mm -hmm. contributing significantly, achieving globally um, and of course prepared to give back to our society. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was last year or last year, earlier this year, mm -hmm. we launched a program where we identified those outstanding solutions um, to be a part of that process with us um, uh, or on their journey of, of personal development. Mm -hmm. um, twinning with the, the government of St. Lucia um, as ambassadors to contribute towards the development of our society. So we found some of those very good people in mm -hmm. the society to be a part of us. Um, they've been working with us steadfastly. Quite a few of them have already delivered you know, substantial projects mm -hmm. um, to St. Lucia. Um, I know for a fact um, we, we have people like um, Jalim Yudovic, Mm -hmm. um, who is working steadfastly globally mm -hmm. um, and dealing with a number of artists, um, world-renowned world, no, world renowned renowned. artists, um, who, of course, I think in his case, there'll be one artist coming in to St. Lucia um, very shortly. We'll make the announcement. Okay. Um, and, of course, making a presentation to the government of St. Lucia. Um, we have Mr. Ken Shitoli, mm -hmm. um, who lives in Canada, but has been a, a philanthropist and providing quite a bit of support yes. to us, mm -hmm. particularly around medical supplies and also the able persons in the society. Um, we also have um, Taj Weeks, uh, mm -hmm. everybody know a musician and philanthropist as well, doing great work, you know, in community mm -hmm. across St. Lucia. Um, and of course, we had, um, let me see if I'm trying to remember them off, off the bat there now. Um, but then we, we, we also looking um, to, to bring in a new um, ambassador. Gotcha. Yes, of course, um, in the person of Miss Claudia Edward. Um, Claudia, as you know, has been a, a, a singer, global singer as well. She sings across the world. But more importantly for us, when we look at the work that she's doing, um, particularly here in St. Lucia, with respect to our schools and our students, um, I think it's, it's, it's something that needs to be given greater recognition. Mm -hmm. um, she's been able to build a theater. I'm not sure how many St. Lucians have built a theater wow. within a school. So she's been able to work with a school to develop a theater. She's been able to work with the um, current secondary school to be able to develop a, a, a lab, a sick lab for the children. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in the case of the Ave Maria School, she's been able to work with them to develop a learning center. So, you know, that's the kind of work you want to recognize. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of um, acknowledgement you want to give to persons who are giving back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so uh, just, just as citizens of this country, not sitting and depending on government, but going out there, achieving and contributing to the development of the society. That's what you want to recognize. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the Goodwill Ambassadors Program is all about that. A model for St. Lucians, you know, so they can see what it is that the society values, you know, and we're talking about culture and valuing um, and, and, and being passionate about things. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we are. We're mm -hmm. passionate about our people. Um, we, we recognize success. We appreciate success. And as a government, it's important for us to say, yes, we value you. We appreciate the work that you're doing. You know, we would want you to continue mm -hmm. and we want you to be that model for other youngsters coming up, you understand, to be able to emulate, you know, and not be envious of, but supportive of, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so yeah, we've got some gems in that program and we're quite elated that these persons have been able to stay within, within the program and work with us um, at this point in time. Mm -hmm. But that's what we want. We want the models, we want passionate solutions mm -hmm. um, who are prepared to give service to country and we want to recognize that for generations to come, mm -hmm. you know, so they can see exactly what it is we value as a people. 
So this is the object of the of the of the um, ambassadorial program. In addition to selling, of course, that St. Lucian brand wherever you are across the globe, people can recognize, you know, and value, you know, that that St. Lucian brand. The, the investment is not always monetary. Absolutely, it's not no. always monetary. It's it, it's about giving service and the quality of person and the mindset, you know, that is sold across the globe as um, a person from St. Lucia. Okay. Quite extensive is your work within the Ministry of Culture and Creative Industries. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making this a two-part series special interview. Uh, do stay tuned uh, to you, our viewers, of watching. Uh, we have a second part to this interview with Senator the Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Jesse Leons. Uh, speaking on uh, the uh, portfolio, the Ministry uh, of uh, Culture and Creative Industries. So stay tuned for the second part of this interview. Uh, goodbye. Meantime.